everyone and welcome back. So today I'm going to show you the makeup disappointments of 2018. I'm not labeling this the worst makeup of 2018 because most of these products I can use in one way or another. It's not like I just want to throw these out and never use them again. In my entire makeup experience, I think there's only been four or five products I have flat out just got rid of upon trying them because they were so bad everything else i can pretty much just work with so there's one thing in here that i think is flat out horrible but i need to try it again now that i have got rid of like my texture problem so other than that um these products are still usable but they're just disappointing in one way or another I'm not bashing these brands in fact most of these brands i have something that's an absolute favorite from um, I use most of these brands in most of my videos, so nothing against these brands. These are just the products that I think are disappointing and that just don't work for me one way or another, so I'm going to jump right into them. The first product is actually a foundation and I love the formula. It's just the colour that is very disappointing. It's the OXX Studio Matte Longwear Matte Foundation. And this is very nice, however it is not extremely matte. I'm pretty sure I did a first impression on this. If I can find it, I will link it in the description box down below. But basically this is a very nice foundation. I love applying it with a brush. It's just the color that is so disappointing. This is supposed to be the color light, and this is even darker than some of my like medium-ish colored foundations that I have when I'm self-tanned. So this doesn't look to be as dark in the tube, but once it's on my face, it does oxidize and go extremely orange. So I do use this in videos because on camera, you can't always tell that it does oxidize so bad so I do use this mainly for um, filming or I'll mix Dermacol or something else in with it to make it a little bit um, less colored but if if this color was so much better it would honestly be my like everyday foundation because it's like six dollars it works amazing with a brush and it looks perfect on my skin it's just the color is so orange this next product is a contour kit and it's more, again, the colour that is disappointing. It is my Australis Contour Kit. This is the powder version. Now, they bought this out in lighter than light. So, for lighter than light complexions. And I thought that was amazing because when I'm very, very fair, I am considered probably in the lighter than light category. And I thought the colours in this would fit me perfectly. Now, I really, really like the contour shades. They have updated the packaging. It's got a mirror and everything now. I love the contour shades. When I'm fair, I can actually even use that one as a bronzer. It's not too cool toned. The thing is, the two highlight shades and the banana shade are too dark. I can get away with using the pinkier highlight a little bit more, but this goldy, peachy highlight, I've got quite a bit of a natural tan at the moment. You might not be able to fully tell, but if I was wearing a singlet shirt, you can. And I am even darker than my Estee Lauder foundation that I have and everything. So I've actually got to um, put a heck of a lot of bronzer on because most of my foundations are actually too pale at the moment and it is a very natural tan so it's more of a natural skin tone but I can just just get away with using this highlighter and I'm like flat out tan at the moment nearly well flat out tan for me so it's very disappointing that I can't really use the banana powder or this highlighter the pink one I can get away with just using a tiny bit which is very sad because I love the, the, the texture and the formula of these the Australis highlighters are a bit powdery but they just look amazing on the face the highlighter that was in my original contour kit was probably my favorite highlighter I've ever used but I pretty much used it all up and then I dropped it and it like shattered the tiny little bit it reminded me a little bit of this color but it just disappoints me a little bit that the banana powder just creates like such a dark under eye. I have to mix it in with my May Cheer powder anyway. This highlighter, which would be my favorite color of all time if I could use it, but it looks like just a giant orange stripe on my face. And this one, even though it doesn't look too pink, it goes like flat out pink. So I th thought that in a, on a lighter than light complexion 
product, they would have put a highlighter and some high and like the under eye powder that's usable. Maybe it's just me, maybe it's the other products I use, I don't know, but slightly disappointing. This product, I really have no idea how to use it. This is the NYX Pigment Primer. I bought this when Priceline had their 40% off sale because I wanted a glitter glue. I have a palette that's got some press glitters in it, but you still need a glue to adhere them. And when I went to go get the NYX Glitter Glue, they were sold out of the glitter glue and only had the pigment primer. And the woman who was working there told me that she uses the pigment primer even when she uses pressed glitters and things like that. So I bought this thinking it was going to be the same thing and it is not. The glitter does not adhere. It takes off all of the other eyeshadow and stuff I have underneath. Um, it's really like odd. I honestly have no idea how to use it. Um, like or how I know how to use it I just don't know how to use it to make it look nice so it's this little thing and it just you rub it in and it it I've even tried using this under like pressed pigment type of stuff and honestly just using my MAC soft ochre paint pot in like a cut crease or something is much more effective than this so this is very disappointing because I had expected it to be very good. Everyone was, t the girls and everyone who was around me were saying it was amazing. It was really good. They loved it. And it just doesn't do anything for me. This face primer is the worst product I tried in 2018. I even put this in one of my disappointing products videos. And I just flat out do not like this. It is the Australis Color Clique face primer. They bought out a heap of these colored primers and I thought that's amazing because I love green color correcting things because my face is quite red or even if I just have a very big breakout or something I love using color correctors because that way I can use a little bit less coverage foundation and it just I like using color correctors. So when they bought out these colored primers, I thought this is going to be great. I've tried a lot of color correcting things and they are very, very dewy. And these were advertised as being slightly more mattifying. And I thought that's going to be fantastic. And I bought the Australis one because they just bought out so many different colors. I thought, well, they know what they're doing. Australis is a great brand. Um, I really haven't tried many things from them that I don't like. So I just thought, why not? And this is absolutely terrible. I am extremely oily, as I have mentioned. And this makes my face look drier than someone who's got flat out bad eczema like my brother's skin peels and cracks and like flakes and you can see the cracks in his skin because it goes so dry this made my face look like that it made my like i will wash my face and moisturize i will even exfoliate beforehand and all of that to make my face perfectly prepped for using makeup and this will make even before I put foundation on it'll make my nose look like my skin is peeling it like all my pimples if I've got any breakouts or little lumps or anything it just makes them look so dry it makes them look even more noticeable around my eyebrows it just like made every it clung to like all the other little hairs it just made my face look so horrible my foundation does not blend over the top. It does not look nice. Even some of my dewy foundations like Rimmel Match Perfection does not look nice over this at all. I cannot find a way to use this. Um, and even then, it is such pale green. It's not even color correcting. Um, it, looks, it looks nice and green on my hand. And then when I blend it in, it literally blends into like nothing. It's got a very, very greasy, greasy tinge to it. I'm going to see if it magnifies my face a bit. It's got such a greasy tinge to it that it like, it's so weird. It's, it's like one of those silicon primers that then makes my face look and feel really dry. I just, I don't like the texture. It's not very color correcting. It makes my face look horrible. This product I've had since about 2016, 17, I can't quite remember when I got it. And this, the only reason why this is in this video is because I 
absolutely hate wearing it because of the like scent and it's like it smells how it tastes it's one of the Maybelline color elixir lip glosses now this is one of my favorite formulas it is super buttery and creamy and it just is hydrating and it's glossy and it looks really nice however it smells like floral with a hint of like vanillary caramel it just it doesn't smell nice and it tastes how it smells and I cannot get over that every time I wear this I can taste it all day even if I just wear it and then 10 minutes later take it off it just I can still taste it all day so I love the color and I love the texture this color is in nude illusion and I really really wanted to buy more because my local chemist has actually got these on sale like all the time and I really want to buy more but I don't want to at the same time because I won't wear them all the time because it just it tastes how it smells and it's just I don't like it this next product is something that I have been using up I will use it up, but I'm not going to repurchase it. It is the NYX Matte Finish Setting Spray. Now, I am aware this is not the most mattifying setting spray out there. However, I do not think setting sprays work on my face. I am someone that if I want my makeup to last, I need to bake. And most of the time, if I just even want my foundation to set, I need to bake. I cannot just put some translucent powder on or some pressed powder on and go about my day. Most of the time, I bake. Even when I'm wearing Estee Lauder Double Wear and things like that, I bake. I don't necessarily bake the outside of my face when I'm using like Estee Lauder Double Wear, but I'll do my T-Zone. If I'm wearing something like Rimmel Match Perfection and I want it to last longer, I need to bake. And I bought a set this setting spray ages ago thinking that it's going to be amazing. It'll settle the powders down. It'll look really nice on my face and it's just going to make everything last longer and it does not. This is not the first setting spray I've tried. I've had demos and like little, um, I've tried haven't bought them but I've gone to stores and tried things like the Urban Decay one I have even tried using Mac Fix Plus now I know that's not a setting spray but I tried that on my face I've tried quite a few matte setting sprays and it just doesn't work like I will bake and I think okay my face looks quite dry and powdery I'll use this even just one spray each side of my face is enough to then make my foundation go back to its like creamy state again it, it basically takes away the powder so before my before i set my foundation it'll be a bit tacky and things like that obviously can't blend stuff just straight on top of it and so i'll set it and it'll be nice and set and my face will be nice and like matte and i know my makeup will last and then i blend bronzer blush highlighter and whatever else on top and then it's fine but if I spray this on top, it's almost like I've just put the foundation on and haven't set it. It makes my face go so sticky. I go so unbelievably oily. It does settle down the powders and make it look really nice, but it just makes my face feel sticky. It makes my foundation around here, like I'm on the sides of my cheeks, feel so like yeah, sticky and just wet. And it makes my makeup feel so heavy. And then at the same time, this is actually too matte for me to be able to use it like to intensify eyeshadows. So I've got a really tiny bit here left. I'm just going to use this up in a video or something. Um, even if there's a time I'm about to film or something and my face looks super, super dry, that's when I'll use this. But other than that, I do not believe in setting sprays. I have a concealer here and everyone was raving about it. I'm pretty sure I've had this for like years. This is the Maybelline Master Conceal. I bought this in the shade Fair. Now I love the color. The color is actually really nice. It's probably one of the nicest colored concealers for my complexion. Everyone was loving this, like Jacqueline Hill was using this and I've seen so many other people use it saying, oh, it's amazing, it's got great coverage. I think this has like no coverage whatsoever. I can use this underneath my eyes and I will still look like I've basically just put a tiny bit of something there to make it brighter. It's got like no coverage. It's okay for my face and it is really nice. Like it's nice and smooth. It doesn't look too bad under my eyes. It's actually one of the only concealers that looks relatively okay. 
but it just has no coverage so I do not understand why people say this has got amazing coverage and things like that it even says full coverage high resistance undetectable finish it does have that undetectable finish you wouldn't look at my face and go oh she's got concealer on but it just it does not look nice it has got no coverage mainly probably under my eyes i have also used this to cover spots and things and it does cover them it's probably more the fact that under my eyes is so bad but this does not live up to the expectations that i had at all people were like saying this is amazing and i do not do not agree i have a lipstick here and this one is not one that the formula is the problem. This one is just the colour. This was probably one of the biggest disappointments of 2018 because the colour is so bad. Now this is the Colourpop lipstick, the Luxe lipstick I bought in the colour Appy. Now I expected this to be a nice pale nude and it's like flat out orange. So online it did not look like this at all. It looked like it was going to be... So look at that. It and my camera's not even picking it up as like intense as what it is. On me, it almost looks like what I would classify a dark, nudie pumpkin colour. That's almost what I would classify it as. Now the formula is amazing, probably one of the best formulas I've ever tried. But the colour is just so drastically different to what it looked like online. It is so orangey, peachy, and I don't necessarily like, I do not like orange peachy tone warm tones even in my nude lipsticks i think pardon me a slightly grayer tone is nicer for me but this just did not look like the picture online at all and it's the only color pop thing i've ordered that does not look like the photo online so if anyone can tell me what the palest um ColourPop nude lipstick is or what the lightest one is or whatever that would be really appreciated because I do not do not like this color I can make it work but I have to use like five other things in order to make it work uh because it was so cheap I am just going to keep it but I just super disappointed in the color I have a bare minerals item here and I did actually buy this at well, with my Christmas money at the end of 2016, so beginning of 2017, I bought myself a Bare Minerals starter kit because I absolutely loved the look of it and I had been wanting to try Bare Minerals for years because everyone says it's amazing. It came with a mini version, a mini version of everything, but it came with a mini version of the Bare Minerals Primetime Original Primer. I had seen Shannon from ShanXO using the, I believe it's, neutralizing i believe that's what it what it's called i think it's a yellowy greeny one but that's what this one came with and i had absolutely no idea what type of primer this was supposed to be because i wasn't that interested in the primer i mainly bought them for the other products that was there this is the worst silicon primer i have ever used in my life this is the greasiest silicon primer now my face does not like the silicon ones at all however the oxx one that i bought the like four dollar one is my favorite it's the one that makes me the least greasy it actually fills in my pores the most and feels the nicest on my face this is like grease heaven this is beyond oily on my face it does not look nice no matter how much I blend it in, my foundation just goes so unbelievably disgusting. It doesn't look nice. It looks streaky. What I do with a silicon primer is I will rub it where I need to. Say I want to put it all over my forehead. I will rub it in as much as I can with my hands. And then I will get a clean foundation brush and I will buff it into my face. That's how I get my silicon primers to last. But even when I do all that, this still makes my foundation go streaky. Even when I'm putting it on with a sponge, it just makes it go disgusting. I do not like this at all. This is not a primer. This is like a grease film. I have a liquid illuminator here and the reason why this is just a bit disappointing is it just makes my foundation look a bit too textured it's the iconic london um illuminator i cannot remember for the life of me uh what color i bought it's just the paler one and i was so excited to try this i got this again like what most of my high-end products on a buy swap and sell group i did get this used but however it was just 
gorgeous like i just wanted to try it so bad and i like it but when i use it in a foundation i mainly the if i want a foundation to be glowy i would rather wear a matte foundation mix in a bit of a liquid illuminator and that's how i get a glowy foundation rather than just straight out wearing a dewy foundation because that makes me go so much more oily so i bought this thinking it's slightly it's a different color than what the other illuminators that I use. I've got one that's a darker bronze that I use when I'm tan. I've got another one that's just flat out like a gold that I use pretty much any time. And I thought I'd buy this one because it's really pale. So I can use this when it is super, when I'm super, super fair. And so for example, if I mix it in with my Maybelline Matte and Poreless, it makes my face go so textured. Like this will cling to my texture. So I've got a breakout coming on here i got one here i got one there and like a little lots of texture in between my eyebrows at the moment and it will cling to that um more than anything else it looks really nice though in the foundation it makes my foundation really nice and glowy and it does mix well with my foundations it just clings to like my dry patches i do not use liquid illuminators as highlighters i only ever use them to mix them in with foundations so i like it okay there's still a couple of other foundations i have i want to try this with but it's just not as insanely skin like as some of the others it's a bit too um chunky i have a foundation here and i am glad i only got the samples i was going to buy the full bottle and i am so glad i didn't this is the urban decay all nighter foundation and this is actually my second sample because i have been trying and trying to find ways to make this work this is in the shade 1.0 and when i'm very very fair this is actually a perfect match however this is this is one of the worst foundations i've ever tried it is so heavy looking even when i apply the tiniest tiniest little bit it is so heavy it is so textured it clings like even when i use that black peel off mask and my face is like baby butt smooth it still makes my face look textured the foundation looks so heavy i even mixed it in with my moisturizer once i have tried to thin it out it looks so bad i've even tried to mix it in with my astralis white foundation because that adds a real skin like appearance to every foundation and it just makes it look so horrible it just looks so heavy and it didn't last that well considering it is so matte it did not last that well i actually have a first impression up on this um but the more i've tried it the more i don't like it it's just really really heavy it sinks into every line that I have. I've tried it with different primers. I've tried it with different powders. I tried baking. I tried not baking. I've tried it with setting sprays. I tried it with my MAC Fix Plus. I even tried putting liquid illuminators in with it. I've done everything and it is just so bad. I cannot find a way to make it work. Um, on my cheeks, it like you can see where I've patted it in with a sponge and I've never had that happen. Um, blending my concealer like once i put my concealer on and i blend it around it actually removes the foundation that's down here and it yeah i went more oily with this than i do with estee lauder double wear considering i think this is actually even more matte it just was very disappointing however the color is perfect when i'm really fair and the coverage is amazing but i just do not do not like it this was in my favourites for the reasoning that I can use it as an eye primer, but I absolutely refuse to use this as a concealer. This is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. I thought this would be amazing to try because it's matte, not necessarily even expecting it to be nice under my eyes. I thought, well, even if it's not nice under my eyes, I'll use it down the centre of my face because... Things like my Focalore concealer, that has coconut oil in it and I cannot use it down the center of my face. I go unbelievably oily. So I thought even using different concealers underneath my eyes, this might be nice, particularly over my nose and my chin to highlight my face um, and things like that. Now, first off, I bought such a pale shade. I did not realize this was so, so pale. This is fair too, but this looks 
so so dry it's not like the urban decay foundation this does not look heavy it just looks so dry even though my face is like highly moisturized and i try this with like um my dewy foundations i've tried it with matte foundations i cannot even begin to try and blend this over a matte foundation it just goes so dry it makes my face my nose look like it's peeling it makes my chin and my like forehead in particular just look so dry and flaky and it will cling to like my texture and everything so i do not like this as a concealer it's even worse under my eyes it looks so like textured because i've got like chicken skin just here it's so bumpy and lumpy i can't get rid of it and it like creased so bad it creased immediately um and because it sort of adhered to like the tops of the bumps under my eyes not in between them so it didn't even look as full coverage um so i don't want to say this is the worst concealer i've tried because there's a couple that are worse but this is definitely not nice on my face however it's in my favorites because it's amazing as an eyeshadow primer it's the only concealer i've ever tried that i can use as an eye primer i have another bare minerals item here this is just the foundation this one's the original and it also came with the matte version the only reason why i'm here complaining about this at the moment is the color i got the shades n10 fairly light and the girl there who was at mecca maxima who was white as a ghost told me she used the color fairly light it was amazing and she loved the color because they had like all these kits in different colors and i wasn't sure what one to get so i got the shade fairly light i was told by three different employees that the fairly light shade would be very nice for me now on camera it doesn't look as bad but it is so dark i would imagine this is in line with estee lauder desert beige that is the color that i imagine it to be i cannot use this unless i am full on full on tanned it is way too dark it seems to make my foundation go even darker um i can't use this just as a powder foundation because it'll cling to where my concealer is and then wear off on the rest of my face um it's very weird that way but i thought i'll just use it as a setting powder particularly on the days where I want it to be when I need more coverage so I could put like a lighter coverage foundation on and put this over the top or even just use this to where I need more coverage like there's so many ways I thought I could use it but the color is so dark and it looks like when I swatch it on the back of my hand it looks really pale but once I put it on my face it looks darker for some reason um even when i'm like ultra fair even when i'm like flat out tan it still seems to make everything go darker but it's a beautiful formula i actually really really like it it's just the color is so dark and i i don't know if it's just the reaction it has on my skin or what but it, it just goes so dark i have another astralis product here and this was even more disappointing than the contour kit i got the halo eyeshadow palette in the shade idolize i actually have a get ready with me where i use this for the first time and i've used it several times since then now this is very nice i can use it i get a really nice eye look with it it is sort of limited but i mean it is nice the eye looks i've done with it look really nice and i don't complain about it it's just it's just a disappointing product because it doesn't have that extreme wow factor that I had assumed it would have. So the contour kits and the face powder and everything from... This is the first time I tried Astralis eyeshadows. But their contour kits and their face powders are so creamy. Like that contour kit that I mentioned earlier, the powders are so creamy. The contour powders and that, it's so nice. It's almost like touching a cream. So I had assumed that this would be the same. And it's just very lacking in that department. So I do get nice eye looks with it. Um, this like milk chocolate shade almost barely shows up on my eyes considering it looks like it is so like slightly darker. This um, color here I think is slightly too cool tone to go with that one. Plus this brown here's got too much of a red tint. I think that's a bit too cool toned and it is slightly, slightly hard to blend. The white here is actually very nice. This is probably one of the nicest whites I've ever used. It is actually super creamy, super pigmented, not chalky at all. So the white's really nice. But I mean, I don't get why there's a matte white. It looks too 
ashy and chalky on my inner corner. Um, but I mean, whatever. It's the nice white. This brown shade here is really nice. Um, it is very shimmery, which is okay. Um, I pretty much only ever use this on my lower lash line, so there's not much I can say about that. And this pinky champagne goldy shade here has got a bit of shimmer in it, but the shimmer like wears off my eyes in like 10 minutes. I've tried a cut crease. I've tried using like my MAC paint pot as the base and putting this directly on top. I've tried wetting my brush with MAC Fix Plus. I have tried putting even a Maybelline color tattoo underneath and the shadow still wears off. I cannot get the that eyeshadow to stay on my eyes. The color stays there, but the like shimmer goes away because this is slightly different to my color tattoo that I would use in Barely Branded. It's a very goldy champagne. This has a lot more of a pinky tint, so I can tell the difference. And yeah, within 10, 15 minutes, like I can tell the eyeshadow's worn off and things like that. So I do use this, it's okay, but it does not live up to the high quality I expected Astralis to have. And my last product is another eyeshadow palette. This is actually from La Cura Beauty. This is the Define eyeshadow palette. I cannot even remember how long I've had this. Probably at least two to three years, maybe. One? Uh, no. I bought it 2016, I think. Um, and pretty much the only thing I ever use in this palette is the silver, the beige, and the white. Other than that, I do not use these colours. I have swatched them, I have played with them, I have tried them, but they, the rest of them are just so lacklustre, or they are just not colours I use. This here is a, like, dark black with glitter in it. That is like a charcoal with glitter in it. That is like a maroney shade I've got in, like, every palette. And then all these purples are just either not as... I, if I want something to be shimmery, I either want it to be flat out metallic or matte or flat out glittery and this is like a satin finish with glitter and the rest of them are like half metallic like sort of shimmery sort of satin like they're nice and pigmented but like if i want a color i want it to be more than this um so i mean really the only times i use this palette is the shimmery white the beigey color and that silver i will mix the white with the silver together to make the perfect silver that i like so that's the only reason why i'm keeping this palette the casing and everything is so nice but i mean i just do not use the palette um when i saw that everything was shimmery i really regretted buying it because i thought that the browns and things were matte the pictures that it showed online and in the catalog and everything said it was matte um, and then when I bought it, everything was shimmery. So that's the last time I buy an eyeshadow palette without actually looking at it. So that was my disappointing makeup products for 2018. I will be keeping a list of the products as well for 2019. So please hit the subscribe button. So at the end of the year, you can see what products I didn't like and which ones become my favorites and things like that and what new products I try. So please hit that subscribe button. It would be very much appreciated. You can also check out the description box down there, which will have a list of these products, my social media sites and other things. And other than that, guys, I really hope to see you in my next video. Bye.